What's going on, man? Welcome back to the basement. I'm Ron, and yesterday we talked about some of my favorite trade targets for fantasy football, but of course, trading isn't a one-way street, right? When you buy a player, you also have to sell a player. So today, we're going to talk through five players I would be looking to sell before week three of the fantasy football season. These aren't necessarily sell highs, but just players that I would be looking to move off of in order to buy the players we talked about yesterday. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you get down below, subscribe, leave a like. Let's go. Now, first up here, we have Christian McCaffrey. All right, and again, it's not a sell high video. It's just players I would be looking to move on from if I had them in a redraft fantasy league. And this is what it comes down to for McCaffrey. Of course, we know who he is when he's healthy. We know what he's done. But he is, at this point, reportedly out six weeks. He's on IR. You also now have Jordan Mason, who looks really good, who, you know, this is a team that's fighting for playoff and Super Bowl aspirations, the 49ers. They're not going to want to ramp up McCaffrey to this 23-point-per-game workload that he had last year when Jordan Mason looks this good. Now, I'm not saying that Jordan Mason's even going to be really startable when McCaffrey comes back, but I would assume that McCaffrey's projection goes from, you know, 23 points per game, legendary running back upside, to like 18 to 20 points per game, which is still great, don't get me wrong, but it's not this like massive gap the rest of the league advantage that he was last year. So now his ceiling is limited. You're not getting him until, you know, week seven, eight, nine, ten. And really the big PSA of this sell portion for McCaffrey is if you're 0 2 or you're like in the bottom four of scoring in your league and McCaffrey's just rotting away in your bench, he has to go. I would even really call this a sell low, to be honest. Because again, like if your back is up against the wall, you need a win this week. McCaffrey simply has to go. He needs to be sold. You can pair him with another player and go make upgrades. Go make your starting lineup better. Go try and win in week three. So, But I will say, if you have McCaffrey and you're 2-0 and you're sitting pretty, then you can just hang out. But I'm just trying to say, I'm just trying to light a fire. You know, if, if your team is struggling... Um, and you have McCaffrey, you need to be looking to move off of it because when we look at like a lot of these rest of season rankings, he still has that name value. He was still the first round overall pick. It's only week three, so people still are grasping onto how they felt about players in the preseason. And this is on Fantasy Calc, the website that we're going to use for the trade database portion of this video. And right now, he's still valued as a first round pick. Now, I will say, I have my Patreon rest of season rankings out right now. You can find them in the description or the comment section down below on patreon.com slash Ron Stewart. I have my top 150 rest of season rankings already out on there. So you can actually see, okay, this is where Ron has McCaffrey. I have as my RB15 right now. Guys, I would trade McCaffrey straight up for right now if I needed a running back. Derrick Henry, James Conner, ETN, Joe Mixon, Josh Jacobs, James Cook, Kyron Williams, all the way through the rest of the top running backs. That's how low I have him. I would assume most markets probably have him more like RB6, RB7, RB8. Again, if I was down bad, I would be looking to move on. Now, let's actually see what he's getting traded for. Because I imagine, I think it'll be all over the place. Like, there might be some really tough sell lows. Let's see. Can we find anything that is resemblance of realism here? Now, of course, this is the Fantasy Calc Trade Database. It takes from Sleeper, all of these sites, trades that are actually happening. We have it set to one quarterback redraft leagues, two to four players in the deal, 10 to 14 team league, half or full PPR. Let's see. Wow, McCaffrey and Quentin Johnson for Garrett Wilson. If I needed Garrett, if I needed a wide receiver, um, I would be open to this. All right, so we got to, like these are these are that's selling too low to me. Um, let's see. McCaffrey for Derrick Henry. I, I would. As much as I don't even really, you know, we had Derrick Henry as a, as a buy target in yesterday's video. If you're down bad at running back, you need the help. I don't think that that's a terrible idea here. Adding Rashad White to McCaffrey for Amon Ross St. Brown. I think I would. I think I would absolutely do that. Um, can we find anything else that looks good? McCaffrey and a piece for Nico Collins. I actually wouldn't hate that. Uh, and then what else can you get for him? McCaffrey and Moss for Mixon. I'd probably stay away from that. Let's find, let's find one more that I like. Because, again, there's going to be a, a far range here. But like, this is another one. Like, if I could do McCaffrey for ETN straight up, I probably would at this point. Uh, I think that probably looks good. McCaffrey for ETN and Chubb as well. I would do that too. McCaffrey for Kenneth Walker. That's one I would hold off on. Um, and then let's see. Is there anything else that sticks out? 
again, a, a McCaffrey for like Garrett Wilson in a piece, uh, I would be all over that as well. Now, moving on to our next sell candidate on this video is another sell low. Like, I, I think honestly, the premise of like selling high, it's a little bit overrated. I think that everybody in your league that's making trades is probably consuming these videos and they're seeing what everyone has as sell highs. Don't get me wrong, we have a couple of sell highs coming up here at the end of the video, but Pittman is somebody I would be looking to sell low on. I don't think that that's a terrible idea of just like selling low before things hit zero. And right now, Michael Pittman is still a guy who has name value as a wide receiver too, right? He was probably drafted in like the, you know, it's it, his his ADP on some of these home league sites like ESPN. I wonder if I remember correctly, he was like the 25th ranked player on ESPN, was like a third round pick at worst on there. If I could sell him for like top six round value, I would. Um, I've also seen him listed as a buy low in other places as well. So if like that optimism of like people want to buy low on Michael Pittman, I would be selling on that idea. Right now, he's the wide receiver 33 in expected points. That's just based on his volume, his ADOT, his red zone targets, all of that. He should be the wide receiver 33. Instead, he's the wide receiver 66. So we're talking low volume, low efficiency. And on top of that, part of the low efficiency is because of Anthony Richardson, who I love as a fantasy quarterback, but in terms of supporting pass catching weapons, it's not great. This is a tweet from Frank Amarante here. He has a 46.7% catch rate, Michael Pittman, through two games. Last year, he was at about 70%, which means that's just, you know, catches divided by targets. And when you have an inaccurate quarterback or an inconsistent quarterback is probably a better word for Richardson, it's going to be tough, especially for a guy in Michael Pittman whose ADOT has hovered around like 8 to 10 yards during his career, which means he's going to get make a living off of quantity instead of quality downfield. And when you have Richardson, that's tough. That's really tough. Again, he's not, he's not seeing the volume you need, right? We're talking wide receiver 33 in volume, and he's paying off his wide receiver 66 right now. I have him currently ranked in my rest of season rankings outside the top like 35 wide receivers rest of season. I want to say in most places, he's probably like top 30, top 25-ish in terms of rest of season, and I would be selling on that for sure. You also get some more uncertainty with this wide receiver room where Josh Downs is coming back, A.D. Mitchell is ascending, Things just get really thin, really spread out. It's tough. It's a low-volume passing offense where it's not efficient either. I just don't know how he pays off. Now, when we look at what we can sell Michael Pittman for. Let's see. Because, like I said, I, I do think he still has name value. People do really look at him as, like, a talented wide receiver in this league. If I could add ETN to Pittman and get CeeDee Lamb, I absolutely would. <clears throat> I wouldn't do Pittman and Dell for Godwin. But if I could do a smaller piece than Dell, if instead of Dell, this was like Khalil Shakir for Chris Godwin, I would absolutely do it. I mean, uh, Pittman from Brian Thomas. I think I would I would sell Pittman for Brian Thomas straight up right now if I could. Uh, Pittman and Kareem Hunt for George Pickens. I wouldn't love adding something onto it, but Kareem Hunt's so inconsequential, I would do this for Pickens. Uh, Pittman for... I would take Jamison Williams over Pittman straight up as well. It's actually a, a pretty savvy move there. Uh, Pittman for Pittman for Tank Dell. I would do Pittman for George Pickens. So like these are straight up one for ones, wide receiver for wide receiver that I would take pretty much every time in all of these. Um, is there any for like a running back that sticks out? Pittman for my, Najee Harris. I probably would hold off there. I don't know. It seems like all these these trades are like a lot more, uh, you know, prevalent where you can do like Pittman for JMO, Pittman for Dell, Pittman and like a small piece for Jaden Reed. Uh, all of those seem fine to me. So I think you can still get out of Pittman for a decent price. Now, our next sell candidate here, Rashad White, um, another sell low. This is somebody we weren't high on in the preseason. He still holds some name value as like an RB2. And right now everyone's getting decimated by injuries, right? Maybe hit up the McCaffrey owner, hit up the uh, Kenneth Walker owner, hit up the Pacheco owner, see if they need Rashad White. It's just a really tough spot. He's averaging 2.1 yards per carry. The offensive line is 30th in run block win rate. So you can you can blame someone on the offensive line if you want, for sure. Bucky Irving is doing better than him in terms of yards per carry. At a certain point, I just don't know how you can keep going back to a running back that has 2.1 yards per carry right now. And the thing about Rashad White is that he was just mindlessly fed last year. He was the RB9 in expected points per game. Again, it's just based on his volume, his carries, his targets, his red zone workload. He was the RB9. Right now, he's the RB21 in expected points per game, and he's the RB30 in points per game. So 
that's pretty tough, especially with the Buccaneers offense scoring points and looking good, right? They just they beat Wash they beat the hell out of Washington, scored a ton of points. They beat Detroit, scored a ton of points, and it's not showing up as PPR points for Rashad White. And to me, that's a big concern. Right now, he's bottom six in success rate. He's bottom six in rush EPA. He's bottom six in rushing yards over expected per attempt. Just across the board, there is no good stat you can find for Rashad White right now. And as he's racking up all this inefficiency, there's just no way that they can continue to keep Bucky Irving off the field. And I don't think that it's going to be Bucky Irving as the 1A. Like, I've seen some people say, well, Bucky Irving's going to take over this backfield. I don't know about all that, but right now it's like a 70-30 split. I could see it going to like 55-45, 60-40, and just getting to a spot where, you know, he's just this back-end RB2 that people are going to be able to replicate off of waivers uh, as we see more RB injuries happen and, you know, handcuffs kind of rise to the top. You know, like a guy like Jordan Mason right now is blowing Rashad White out of the water. So if I could move on, um, I absolutely would. Now, in terms of what we can get for Rashad White, I hope that people haven't soured too much. Like I said, he has like kind of a, a fan base... All right, people, people seem to be souring a little bit. I mean, there's just no way. I mean, actually, this maybe this isn't that crazy. If I had to add, like, some random receiver, like maybe Cortland Sutton or Kolo Shakir to Rashad White to get Olave, I absolutely would. Um, Rashad White or Brian Robinson? I would probably take Brian Robinson still. I wouldn't go that low. Uh, Rashad White for Drake London. Give me Drake London. Rashad White for Jamison Williams. That's about as low as I'll go. That's about as low as I'll go, and I would only do it if I needed the wide receiver in flex depth. Um, oh, Rashad White and like a P. Ryan for ETN. I would do that all day. And I don't even really like ETN that much. Rashad White for J.K. Dobbins. I think I would. Um, Rashad White for Jalen Waddle. I, I will say people are like maybe buying low on Jalen Waddle right now. I'm not really – like I almost actually put Tyree Kill as a sell candidate here. I don't want really anything to do with the, the uh, Dolphins pass catcher, so I'll hold off on that as well. Um, is there anything else that sticks out to me? Let's see. Mixon and Rashad White for Devontae? No, I can't get there. Rashad White for T. Higgins. And like Pacheco late season. I'd probably hold off on that. Rashad White and Jacoby Myers for Derrick Henry. I actually, I think I would actually do this. I, I don't hate that at all. Um, and then, of course, I wouldn't do Rashad White and Garrett Wilson for James Cook. But if I could add to the Rashad White to get the James Cook... Um, I absolutely would. And it's just kind of my philosophy with running backs just as a whole. What I would be doing with Rashad White is I would either be tearing up or tearing down, where I either go from Rashad White to, you know, up top. Of I'm trying to think because, like, you're not going to go out there and buy, like, Brees Hall or Bijan or whatever. But if you can go get Gibbs or Achan um, or even below that, if you can get to, like, James Cook, uh, even, like, James Conner, uh, I actually really like, I would be trying to do that. But if not, I would rather just punt RB2 and play it you know, with like Zach Moss or something like that, where he's much cheaper and you can get, you know, you can downgrade from Rashad White to Zach Moss and get a wide receiver piece to put in your flex um, as all these injuries hit and everything on top. So moving on from that, our fourth sell target here, let's talk through, um, this is actually our first like, like traditional sell high um, and it's Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley, he is the wide receiver 16 right now, despite not really getting a ton of usage, right This last week, he had 12.2 expected points, but he put up 24.7. He outproduced his expected output by about double. He was expected for 12.2. He outperformed it by 12.5. He had like a, a, I wouldn't call it a broken play, but he had like a pretty crazy catch versus Sauce Gardner on like a uh, deep bomb. And I am kind of bullish on Will Levis, like throwing it around the yard and making things fun, but this is going to be tough to sustain. Again, Ridley had a really improbable catch downfield. Then he also had a rushing touchdown as well, which you're not going to see a ton from Calvin Ridley. And really my biggest hangup is just how he sustains this. Right now, like the whole appeal of drafting the the Titans this offseason was Brian Callahan coming in. He's going to bring in a up-tempo, pass-heavy offense. And through two weeks, they are 22nd in neutral pass rate. They're 22nd in wide receiver volume. This is wide receiver volume from Hayden Wings here, where it's just expected points per game uh, for the wide receiver position. It's just not a ton of volume to go around. It's also going to get crowded here very soon, where DeAndre Hopkins went from 24% of the routes in week one to now 51% of the routes. And once he gets up to 90% plus and is like a full-time wide receiver and it's him and Ridley, it's going to be tough for Ridley to be reliable on a weekly basis. Like to me, he's kind of like just a, a mid-range, low, low-end low wide receiver three without the high-end upside scoring that guys like Jamison Williams and Rashid Shahid have right now. So if I could 
sell him high on this performance. I wouldn't hate it. Also, they seem to love Tony Pollard, and this defense is a lot better than expected. Or maybe not better than expected, but the defense is really good with Sweat, Simmons, uh, Snead on the back end. So they're going to have a lot of games that are like close, grinded out football. You almost get the the idea from Callahan that he almost like wants the ball not in Will Levis's hands in terms of like determining outcomes of games because now he's cost you know two games in a row. To be honest with you, uh, as a Jets fan, like I was genuinely sweating um, until he had the the weird fumble with the the funny pictures and everything. Uh, and of course, like Tony Pollard has actually been good this year. So this is going to be like kind of this like defense ground and pound. Uh, there's of course going to be deep shots down the field, but I just don't know if it's going to be startable on a weekly basis and if they'll put up enough points to kind of overcome uh, the low volume. So when we look at what we can sell Ridley for, I, I do wonder, are people truly selling high on this performance? Like I said, I am always skeptical of like true sell highs. I would do Calvin Ridley for Tank Dell in a heartbeat. Uh, Calvin Ridley for Brock Bowers in a heartbeat. Um, what else? Calvin Ridley and J.K. Dobbins for Garrett Wilson. I really like J.K. Dobbins, but if he wasn't making my starting lineup, I would do a move like this for sure. Calvin Ridley for Mark Andrews. Yeah, I mean, if you have tight end problems, it seems like you can kind of fix them with this. Again, Ridley for Tank Dell. Tank Dell, uh, I was going to have him as a buy candidate, but he was already in week one's uh, buy target video. Uh, if you could flip Calvin Ridley for Tank Dell, I absolutely would. Uh, you know, just a guy, like, of course, it's going to be, people are going to say, oh, well, Calvin Ridley's the wide receiver one in his offense. I just don't really care. Tank Dell is hovering around, like, 20% target share and one of the best offenses in the NFL. Uh, and if Mixon, you know, if, if he's actually banged up, they could pass even more than they are right now. Uh, man, give me give me Xavier Worthy over Calvin Ridley very easily. I think you could even talk me into Jordan Mason over Calvin Ridley if I needed the running back help. Um, again, Calvin Ridley for Tank Dell. Calvin Ridley for DJ Moore is a close one, but I would prefer DJ Moore um, at this point. Let's see. Was there one? Yeah. Oh, Calvin Ridley and Malik Neighbors for Rashi Rice. I'd probably hold off on that. Uh, is there anything else that sticks out? I'll probably pass on the rest. I will say, I mean, Calvin Ridley and Shahid for Jamar Chase, sure, but that's just not going to happen. All right, so our last sell candidate here is another sell high. It's Kolo Shakir for me. He's the wide receiver 29 right now. Uh, sure, there's some year three breakout potential. I do just worry about, like, what his weekly volume will look like in terms of being confident starting him, especially if it's, like, a two wide receiver, one flex league. There's almost not a scenario where Shakir ever makes your starting lineup. Uh, right now... He is just the wide receiver 73 in terms of expected points per game. He is the wide receiver 30 in points per game. And when we look at just like the players that outproduced their output by the most this far this season, right? Kolo Shakir, 6.8 expected points per game. He is outperforming that by 5.1 per game. That's just not sustainable over an entire season. So it gets kind of tough here. And you can see this range of receiver that he's with in terms of outproducing this output. He's up there with Ashton Doolin, Jalen Naylor, and then Calvin Ridley, who we just talked about. It's just guys that are outperforming their expected volume right now. And I think, especially with this Bills team, they're very run heavy. The Bills passing game is going to be spread thin. And most of these touchdowns are going to Josh Allen and James Cook. So I don't know. If anyone wants to buy high on a Big game for Kolo Shakir. I get that they bumped up his routes, and he seems like he's the wide receiver one there right now, but it's just not all wide receiver ones are created equally. I think also you have some threat of Keon Coleman coming into the mix, Curtis Samuel potentially getting his routes bumped up after kind of having a turf toe injury to sort of begin the season and linger through preseason. So we'll see how that sort of shakes out. But again, like in shallower leagues, I think that Kolo Shakir is a good sell high candidate here. Let's see. Does he go for anything real can you sell him for anything real I would add him to something to get somewhere let's see it's nothing crazy it's nothing crazy sadly I mean close secure for Christian Kirk I would um let's see is there anything else that sticks out close secure it's probably a, a, a situation where you want to like add him to another player to get another piece I'm trying to see I mean, that's just crazy. Close secure for Najee Harris. If I needed a running back, I would. Um, this one I like too. Close secure adding to Pittman to get the J.K. Dobbins. I would do that as well. Uh, close secure for Deontay Johnson. I think I would do that too. Uh, just hoping that Andy Dolan makes that offense good. Uh, I would, like, if I could if I could turn Close secure in a piece into Rashid Shahid or Jamison Williams, I would. I'm just more confident in those players. I would take Jaden Reed over Close secure if anyone's freaking out about the, the Packers right now. 
Shakir and Montgomery to get to Garrett Wilson. Yeah, I, I just think that he's a, a good, like, I don't think you're going to get anything crazy straight up for Khalil Shakir. But if it's one of those moves, right, like you got to add, like we just talked about with Rashad White, you got to add something to Rashad White to get up to James Cook or whatever, or um, a better running back. I would be looking to add a guy like Khalil Shakir in a two for one, upgrade my starting lineup. But that's going to do it for us today. Again, as always, if you want my rest of season rankings, you can find those over on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Ron Stewart. I have my top 150, my tiers. So you can see when you're in trade talks, who do I prefer rest of season? That's going to be on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Ron Stewart down below in the description and the comment section down below. But if you can't support there, just leave a like, subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next one. Like this froze, ice cold